In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. For the last several weeks, you have watched me hobble around because of an injury of my left foot. I've been wearing a boot most of the time, but in liturgy, I try not to wear the boot because it is very awkward and it's difficult to go up and down the steps with or without the boot, more difficult with the boot. So in some way, I read this gospel and understand a little bit what this man may have thought, but certainly a few weeks hobbling around with a boot on my foot is different than 38 years of illness. So there's very little connection other than the fact that when we are well, it is difficult for imagine us to be sick and when we are sick, at least in my own thinking, it is difficult for me to imagine when I am well. I'm not sure I understand exactly why that is. But until we are well, it is difficult for us to imagine anything other than wellness until we become sick. But this man is sick 38 years with an illness. The tradition of the church tells us that he is a paralytic. He doesn't live at the five pools of Siloam. He goes there daily. Somehow he manages to get there. But it tells us that there is an angel that stirs the water there within certain seasons. And in the stirring of that water, the first one who steps in is healed of his disease, of his illness. It's difficult for any of us to imagine how after 38 years, this man has not managed to get into the water first after the stirring of the water. So this curious question is presented to us by Christ. Well, seeing the man and knowing his predicament asks him, do you want to be healed? One first would think, well, of course, after being ill 38 years, of course he wants to be healed. He doesn't say that exactly. What he says is, sir, I have no man to put me in the water. After 38 years, this individual has no one to help him in the water. The other day I had a funeral at the Colma Memorial Park, the Greek Orthodox Memorial Park in Colma. And Father Manoli and I did the interment service, but we had to walk from the road all the way across what is not a very level surface with the grass and all the other things that happened over the years. Immediately, there were people there to help me. I didn't ask for anything. There were just people there to make sure that I didn't fall, and then to return to the car, the same took place. I thought to myself, I didn't even have to ask. And of course, Father Manoli knows. He was right there to help me. And then there were two other people to help me. And in reading this gospel, I thought to myself, how fortunate I was and am to have people there that are looking after me in this situation and how unfortunate this man is after 38 years, I began to wonder what 
has taken place. So this man has no one to help him in the water. And of course, then the question becomes even more interesting. Do you want to be healed? St. Paul is plagued with an illness, a thorn in his side, as he says, and he has prayed to the Lord three times to ask him to take it from him. And the Lord's response to him, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. At seminary, we had a work-study program, and we were to attend twice a week HRI, Human Resource Institute. It was a place where psychiatric patients were housed. Five stories of patients. President Anicki received a position there to be the secretary to the head psychiatrist. So it's a wonder that she has been able to deal with me all these years. But we were there to help and to witness, to learn. And there were times that we listened to conversation. There were patients there who did want to be healed. They wanted to be made well so they could go home. However, curiously, there were other patients there who did not want to be healed. They did not want to be made well. And in listening to conversations, many of them were afraid to go home. Some of them have no one. But more importantly, to be made well and to go home means that you need to take responsibility for yourself. You need to look after yourself. There was a film many years ago, The Green Mile, about inmates in prison. And what was interesting is that many of them that were paroled and left prison had a very difficult time adjusting to their new life of freedom. And some of them committed crimes just to go back into the prison. Even though a life was difficult there, there were people there to look after them. There were people there to direct their life. They didn't have to take responsibility for much of anything because others were there to make sure they got up in the morning, did their chores, and retired in the evening. There are people in the scriptures that come to Christ for healing. They want their daughter or their son or themselves to be healed of their illness. Some of them spend a great deal of money to seek a cure. And the gospel passages during Great Lent, and especially in the weeks leading up to Holy Week, focus on some of those miracles. But more importantly, the place of Christ in their lives. The place of Christ in the life of the church how saints of the church have been affected by the presence of Christ in their life. And then following the celebration of Pascha, we have a few weeks that we remember events connected directly to the resurrection. Up until that last week, the myrrh-bearing women. And this week begins a series of gospel passages that are not directly connected to the resurrection of Christ but connected to his healing power. The paralytic, this happened before Christ's crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. The Samaritan woman next week happened before. So the purpose of the church is to bring all of that. The same Christ before the crucifixion is the same Christ after the crucifixion. The same healing power and message of Christ before the crucifixion is the same message of healing 
after the crucifixion. The church wants to remind us of that fact, to reiterate that it is the same Christ. Christ did not change. So what brings us to this point to think about healing and illness, decay and death? For that is what we are all faced with in life. Joys and sorrows, happiness, celebrations, but at the end, we are all headed down the same path. It is not a morbid thought. For the saints of the church, it was a glorious thought to finally meet their Lord and to adjoin him in his heavenly kingdom. It is the in-between that becomes the challenge. I was reading an interesting article the other day And the word demon came up in the article. And demons and demonic power have one goal in mind, and that is to destroy what God has created. To take away existence as we know it in the world in which God has created and to reform it in a different reality. Demons and demonic power want to pull us away from God. They want to throw so much distraction in our life that we no longer know which direction to go. They put all sorts of words on paper, in articles, and on radio and television that it confuses us when we listen to any of this discussion about anything. Demons are part of this world, unfortunately, and we need to learn how to discern the truth when presented to us. Christ is the truth, and what he taught is the truth. And what he wishes for us is truly a joyous place in the kingdom of God. But it begins here. It begins in the church. It begins with our relationship with Jesus. This man had no man to put him in the water. It could be said that the first person to speak to him after 38 years about his illness and anything about wanting to be healed was Jesus Christ himself. Imagine that. And in that moment, this man's life changes from a life of depression and loneliness to a life of opportunity and joy. I can only imagine what he felt like when he lifted up his pallet and walked away from the pools of Siloam in Bethesda. I can only imagine what he was thinking when he was confronted by the authorities. Today's the Sabbath, you cannot carry your pallet. And yet he knew that just a few moments before, he was not able to walk, and now he's able to walk. He did not know who it is that healed him, and yet, when Christ finds him in the temple, in the temple he finds him. A man probably offering prayer and thanksgiving to God. He then comes to know Christ. And he then speaks about what has taken place in his life and who healed him. Let us do the same. No matter what the challenge no matter what the illness or sickness, to be able to turn and to understand that Christ offers us not just his love and not just hope, but eternal life, and in a sense, that belonging, a connection to our Savior, that we may also then speak 
to others about who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us. Amen.